Hey, I'm doing. Got carried away trying to get Neil a drink. He was thirsty. Oh, what a good day. Amen. There's a lot of faces returning. Glad to see everybody online, social media. Glad y'all are with us tonight. Before we get started, you know, sometimes, sometimes we get hung up in stuff that that we shouldn't get hung up in, and we throw our own pity party, and we act like a daggone two-year-old, and we stomp, and we suck, soul, and we just, you know, and, and then it hits you like a sack full of bricks. Why are you, why? You got a risen Savior that said, don't worry about it. I got this. I'm going to take care of it. And... Anyway, I've been thinking about that for the last couple of days, and so just felt like it needed to be shared. Today is the 24th. All day long, that's right. Mm -hmm. We got pollen on the ground. We got weeds popping up. A little bit of grass. It's coming on. There's a message in that. The wheat and the tares together. That's right. All right. Let's get started. We'll open it up with a prayer request. I got one. Uh, my sister texted me, said uh, Pop Pop has two more weeks of chemo left. Uh, he's really starting to feel the effects now. The treatment's starting to wear him down, but he won't know how well it worked until they run tests after. But we're just praying that, that he gets to keep his hair and he don't have a... Uh, he, he doesn't have effects, and, and that uh, that cancer is gone. I'm just believing. I just I'm just believing for it all. Okay. Yeah. But thank y'all for uh, also thank y'all for for praying for Ronnie Wallace while he uh, and the family, the whole family while while he undergoes these uh, these treatments. Y'all, thank you for keeping him in your prayer. Mark. That's right. But if a lot of times they may not think what they're doing is touching somebody, but I'll let them know it touches me. It makes a difference. It, it makes it, a difference. It, it you makes a Hey, can you come up here and do that again? <laughs> See, y'all, y'all saw what he did. He got out of camera view and and performed. But anyhow. <laughs> no, Mike, you're exactly right. The production team, without the production team, without the music team, and I mean, they, they pull this whole, whole organization together. Yes, ma'am, Miss Kathy. Having neck surgery on Sunday. Johnny. Johnny's got a doctor's appointment Friday. See what see what the doctor can come up with on some x-rays. Yes, ma'am. Um, my coworker name, her name is Pamela Nunley, and I found out she was in a car accident a couple weeks ago, like the day before we left for spring break. I found out yesterday we need to pray for her because the year before she broke her leg. So I was going to pray for her. I have another coworker. Her name is Miss Elizabeth Patterson, and she just had her fourth chemo. Pray for her to come back. But now their class has no teacher. Mm.
Ralph. Unspoken prayers for all that need it. Yes, sir. I am glad to see Ronnie back. Ronnie got to the doctor and got some medicine and he's coming on back. Dale? That's right. We got some folks that are traveling. Y'all keep them in your prayers. Mr. Everett? Lift, lift up the body of Christ in itself. Lift up this country. Bring it back into the place of God. Amen. We want, we want to continue to lift up uh, the uh, community-wide event that's coming up, man, that God will be glorified, that, that we bless the community and be unchurched. We also want to keep uh, Sean in our prayers and his family as, as they travel this weekend, if I understood right. And um, we want, want, want the Lord to watch over them and give them safe travel. I don't know. I don't know how many people have seen this or know this. There's a there's a young lady from the Legion Fields, right, Carrie? Her name is Rose Gunnels, I believe. Anyhow, Rose is maybe a sophomore or junior in high school, and she's she's a friend of a friend of ours, and she had she had some pretty significant heart surgery, and then had some complications, and has been going through some trying times, and she's she's got a pretty awesome support group with her, but. Prayer, prayer works. Uh, you know, I mean, we've been we've been praying for her, but you know, peace for that family is there is there understanding this and going through it. But um, I guess it was a couple of days ago they actually had a pretty good report um, that that things are starting to look up a little bit. Yes, sir, Mr. Everett. Yes, sir. Chris, y'all got any back there? Okay. Miss Sherry was here. She would say, "Men defenses." That's right. Right. That outreach in a hole. You're exactly right, Joel. Anybody else? All right. Let's go to the Lord. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we come to you tonight, Lord. Lord, thankful and blessed that, that we have the opportunity to come, Lord, and bring our troubles to you, Lord. Bring our, our concerns and, and, Lord, you said bring them to me. Lord, as we, we've talked about tonight, Lord, there's, 
There's members of this body that are that are hurting, Lord. They're sick. Lord, they're they're lost. There's members outside this body, Lord. They need healing. Lord, whether it's the the brand new newborns, Lord, or the or the ones that have the ones that are here to teach us to pass things on, Lord. Lord, from from traveling to our to our youth, to our kids. Lord, there's not. Lord, I just help us to help us to be strong and to outreach to, to kids and to children, Lord, that 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 in and it is not the way. Lord, there is there is so many other options. Lord, and when they Lord I when when a child takes their life, when anybody takes their life, Lord, Lord, they're they're Lord, I just ask that that, that you give us the strength to stand up. And to say, you know, recognize, Lord, that recognize that there's an issue. Recognize, not only recognize, but give us the strength to be strong and have the courage to stand up and say, Hey, let me let me talk to you. Let me let me help you with that. And Lord, we may not we may not be the, the perfect answer, we may not be the right answer. But but Lord, just point us in the right direction. Point us in the right direction so that we can we can help them, our kids. Our adults, Lord, our first responders, they uh, hold there on the front lines. Lord, there's, there's tragedy there too. Lord, we thank you for what's going on in Men Defenses. We thank you for what's going on in the church body, in the outreach, in the fellowship. Lord, and you know we, Lord, it, it's not about filling these seats. It's about reaching. Lord, it's about reaching. And, and just, just like Sean said, Lord, if we, can, if we can reach one, and that one can reach one, and that one can reach one, Lord, over time, we'll, we'll reach many. Lord, thank you. Thank you for being there for us. Jesus, thank you for sacrificing yourself to take away, to take away everything that, that we have done and, Lord, what you knew we were going to do. Lord, as we go through today, the rest of the week, the rest of our days, Lord, everything that we do, Lord, I just ask that we do it with you in mind and you get the glory, Lord. Lord, and the ones that are having surgery, Lord, I, I ask for a a great outcome where, where you are you are glorified from the bottom to the top, Lord. It's all in your hands. And Lord, sometimes we throw our pity parties. And Lord, you you forgive us of that. You take care of that for us. Lord, we love you. Forgive us where we fail you. I ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Y'all, every time I sing this song, I think about Mimi. My mother, I 
I'm going there No more to roam I'm only going And see the golden feet fly out before me, where weary eyes no more will be. I'm going there to see my father. I'm going there.
Grazie. Thank you, brother. Yeah. Encore. Encore. All right, y'all. <laughs> we were just talking about that up here a while ago, and uh, you know, some were called and some just went. <laughs> when it comes to music, I uh, just went. <laughs> right here on the front row. Uh, I feel sorry for. For those that are right up here, boy, when they sing a song like that that I know, I just lay that old head back and just belt it out. And uh, it, it reminded me, uh, when Callie was first learning to play guitar, well, she wasn't just learning. She'd been playing for about a year. And she'd get out there on the front porch, and she'd get to playing and singing. At that, at that time, we had a Beagle Basset Hound, and, uh, and its name was Peanut. And uh, its middle name was Bicycle. That's what you get when you let your toddler name the dog. So Peanut Bicycle was there and would be right in front of Callie. And as she was playing and singing, he would drop his head and go, Ooh! Ooh! And uh, I walked out and I said, man, you're torturing that dog. Callie say, hush, Dad, he's a fan. <laughs> he's digging it. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> Oh, yeah, that's good stuff, good stuff. We're going to be in uh, Philippians chapter 4. I, I, uh, I tell you what, it's, I think it's one of those, uh, my father, I guess, he wants me to, he wants me to pay attention to him because uh, last night I had an opportunity just to visit with a brother I ain't talked to in a while. And, and uh, man, you know, sometimes in life when, when uh, you kind of get a curve, you know, it's something that hits you and it's outside of what you had planned to do. Uh, how many of you have ever got your mind made up that I'm going to go in this direction, I'm going to do this certain thing, this is the way I'm going to do it, I mean, and, and you got it planned, and, and it's in your head, and you're set for it, and then all of a sudden, <laughs> yeah, something happens, and man, you got two choices at that point. You can get upset, or you can just go with the flow. And uh, I had an opportunity. Man, I done praised up, and uh, man, I, I tell you, I, I, lately here I've been listening, praise before I, before I get ready to, just to clear my head, and you know, I tell you all the time about worship. So I got a playlist. It's it's uh, God's country, and I, every every Christian or every country song that you know that has that Jesus feel flavor, uh, I have it on a playlist, and I listen to that a lot. And, and, and a lot of Chris would do, a whole bunch of Chris would do. And, but when I really just want to get on my face and just worship, I'm gonna tell you the last couple of weeks it's been passion, and. Uh, just listening to that worship. So I'm on my face before the Lord. I'm, I'm bawling. I, I mean, I'm thinking about the sacrifice that Christ paid for us. You know, it's that season when we really start to focus in and hone in on what our Lord and Savior did for us. We were guilty now. We were guilty of the sins that we committed. It wasn't that our brother did it. You know, when you're growing up, how many had siblings? <laughs> uh -huh. Y'all with me? And growing up, you could say, wasn't me, Daddy. You know, and if he, was, if he or she was littler than you, well, they couldn't defend themselves, you know. It, it was him. It was her. And you could blame that. But when it came to sin, oh, it was me. I did it. I did it. I owed a price for that sin. I owed a price for those sins. You know, uh, it encourages me that you know, on, on the on the lay pastor elder uh, text messages, you know, come out, and we had a conversation this past week, and it was about, and it reminded me of a song. Remember that old song? I don't know if uh, if y'all sang it. We did back back at our church way back when. when I remember it first in, in a youth camp. So we're talking, you know, back in eighty six, eighty seven, and uh, but he paid a debt he did not owe. I owed a debt I could not pay. I needed someone. To wash my sins away. And now I sing a brand new song, Amazing Grace, all day long. Christ Jesus paid a debt that I could never pay. You know, none of us could pay the price. None of us could come up with enough to, 
to pay the price. You know, uh, uh, all the money James Floyd has, no way could he pay the price. He's, I love to pick on James. And by the way, he likes to hold hands. So if you're praying beside him, I'm just kidding. Anybody that knows James know he ain't no hand holding hug. He ain't no hugger. <laughs> uh, so I'm going to move on. <laughs> I could almost hear what he's thinking. Jesus paid the huh? Oh, yeah, I forgot. He's a note taker. <laughs> uh, note taker, scratch that last thing. Jesus paid a debt, a debt that we could never pay. We could never earn our way to heaven. We could never do enough good to justify salvation. Jesus Christ took our punishment. He didn't just take our sin. It's bad enough when when. When we feel like we feel when we sin, the sin we sin. He took that. Think about it. He took Hitler's. <laughs> he took anyone, anyone, every mass murder, everyone who has ever committed a sin from a white lie all the way to that couple who molested that baby to death last year that, that just had my lip quivering, bawling. He felt that sin. He took it all. Every single sin. Past, future, present. All on himself at one time. Can you imagine? Well, we got uh, 330 million in America. Is that, is that right? About 330 million. That's just those that are here right now. Just think of 300, the sins of just 330 million. How, how many do we commit a day, a week, a month, a year? Just one. Multiply that times 330 million. That's just the sins of Americans he took on himself at one time. Now, you multiply that times all creation, whoever was, to who the last one that will be, all at one time on himself. That alone should have killed him. That alone should have killed him. But he mustered up enough strength to take one last breath and shout, It is finished! And then gave up his life. Can you imagine so I was thinking of all of this. I don't even like the way I feel with my own sins. Yeah. You think of all of that, and he took that for us. So, yeah, I was bawling. I'm a mess. And, uh, and I get up, I wipe it up, I'm blowing snot, I'm cleaning up, I got it hanging and dripping, and I don't even care. Right. And I wipe all up, <laughs> snort it up. <laughs> I saw our nonverbal communication going. <laughs> Once I cleaned up and I sat down with that blank page, man, I already, I knew, fl and I started to go and, got a, and had an opportunity to visit with a brother. And I'm like, you know what? I'd rather, I'm, I'm going to visit with a brother. And, and uh, man, it, it, was, it was awesome. And I know, God's, I know God's got this. I know he's got this. And so I want to get right into it. I, don't, I, I'm, I know I'm not going to have time to finish. But uh, Philippians chapter 4. I don't have a single note, so y'all just, uh, just bear with me. Philippians chapter 4 it says, Therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, who's he talking to? Us. us. He's talking to Christians at Philippi. When we read it, he's talking to us. He's talking to Christians. <laughs> this next statement makes you wonder, Therefore, dear brothers and sisters, us, Christians, believers in Christ, followers of Jesus Christ, stay true to the Lord. Why would he need to say that unless there were those that did not stay true to the Lord? You know, Lana touched on it. I preached on it, I don't know, three or four weeks ago, that there will, the end of all things will not come, Thessalonians, except that there be a falling away first. 
you think, now I'm just going to have to abandon the notes for a minute. I just got to go. We may not even get into Philippians chapter 4. Think about this. This ought to shake you. Every single person, listen, every single person in here. Why would he need to say that unless those were not staying true to the Lord? And I want to submit this. I believe we're in the last days. I'm not ready to preach it yet, but I got a lot of information I want to share. Just not ready yet. I got to fill in some missing pieces of the puzzle, and, and then, then, then I'll, I'll be ready. So if we believe that we are in the last days, I truly believe that this will be the generation that witnesses the second coming of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and we are caught up with him in the air. I truly believe that's coming swiftly. It won't happen un- except there be falling away first. And I want to submit this. I was listening to a preacher. No, I was reading uh, 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 Jimmy Evans, and he was talking about the parable of the ten virgins. There were ten of them, were there not? They were waiting on the bridegroom, were they not? The bridegroom did not know when he was going to be sent to gather his bride. He had no idea. By Jewish custom, the the groom does not know when he's going to get the bride. The father tells the groom when it's time to go get the bride. That's Jewish custom. So the groom is prepared a place. The bride's job is to make sure that she's got all her oil ready for her lamp because if he comes or calls for her at night, she has to be ready so that she can, she can light her lantern and light her light. She can get to him, to her, to her uh, groom, and get there. There are how many virgins in the parable? Ten. How many prepared for the coming of the groom? How many were not prepared? If that applies to the church, (laughs) my lip is quivering. 50% of the body that go to church ain't going to make it. The first hall. 50% of the body will see the man of sin. 50% of the body will see the Antichrist take his seat upon the throne. 50% of the body will go through tribulation. They go to church. If that parable is about the body of Christ, that ought to shake us to the core. We got to be diligent, church. We got to be diligent about the purpose that God gave us at Trails in Cowboy Church, Harrison County. I was talking to a, to a preacher friend today, uh, a pastor, and, and w- when we were talking, we were talking about arena ministry. That's our tool to reach the lost in the Western culture. We're not just a, a, a country church, a, a country church, a, a church with a country flavor. We're called to be a cow. We are a we are a cowboy church, and our mission statement is to provide a church home where they can learn and become more like Christ. Amen. That's our tool. That's our tool, and a lot of the teams are put together to support that tool and the ministry. You got ministry teams, non-ministry teams, church. We got a job to do. Amen. If the end is approaching quickly. It says, the end will be as, as in the days of Noah and Lot. So will the end be. We're seeing it. We're seeing it. Man, I'm just going to let that marinate for a little bit. We got to make sure that we are ready. We got to make sure that our family is ready. If you don't have kids... That if you have kids, grandkids, nieces, nephews, best friends, those that you don't know if they would go to hell, here's what, I don't know if I dreamt it or I was in that, you know, that kind of slumber state where you don't know if you're dreaming or you're just thinking vividly. My best friend didn't make it. And I could see him. And I had an opportunity to tell him about Jesus and I was too scared to do it. Are we willing to stand at the, at, at, at the marriage supper of the Lamb 
look out across the great white throne judgment and see some of our family and friends knowing that we could have told them about Jesus, but we chose not to. Now they get to spend eternity in hell and they didn't know. Well, the Bible says that we'll all have an opportunity, but maybe he wants to use us to do it. Maybe he wants to use me. I'm sure he does. I'm sure he does. Man, we have an awesome responsibility. And I don't want that to, to weigh you down. I want that to encourage you. If, if, uh, don't get scared. Don't get, there ain't no time for getting scared. We got work to do, church. We got work to do. I know that's kind of heavy. I can feel it sitting on the room. Why well, a heavy load? <laughs> Stay true to the Lord. Trails in Cowboy Church, Harrison County. My dear brothers and sisters, stay true to the Lord. I love you. I long to see you, dear friends, for you, my, you are my joy and the crown I received from my work. Uh, let's look at 3 John 1, 4. It says, I could have no greater joy than to hear that my children are following in the truth. Man, that is a great joy. Paul is saying, Paul is saying the same thing in his letter to the Philippians. Um, those of you who have, who have uh, either led someone to Christ or have had an opportunity to mentor uh, a, a Christian, a new Christian, or mentor someone in the faith, or you've taught Sunday school, you've taught little rangers, you've had an opportunity to share the gospel. What joy it is when you see them later and they're living the faith. They're living for Jesus Christ. They're serving in the ministry. They're teaching others about Jesus. They're sharing the gospel. And you know that you had a part in that. Man, it just makes your heart swell. Uh, Creed was, was going home. He had been at, at Little Wranglers. And uh, Callie put a, uh, a post on Facebook. And Creed was singing one of the songs that they were singing in Little Wranglers on the way home. He learned a new song. Uh, uh, the, uh, in, in uh, was it Sunday? Was it Sunday or last Wednesday? Eli come running out and he said, Dad, guess what we learned? He washed my feet. And he said, did, did y'all study about Jesus washing the feet of the disciples? He said, yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Those things stay with you forever. Y'all remember your first Sunday school teacher. Y'all remember uh, those of you who were little and, and got to uh, go to church or or, uh, or you heard your grandma or your mom or your dad, someone tell you about Jesus and share those stories and those things that, that burn in your heart. Paul is saying, man, it gives me great joy. It gives me great joy to see that you are staying true to the Lord. Let's go to Philippians 4.2. Now I appeal. So all of a sudden he switched here. Now I appeal to Euodia and Sin. I'm gonna, I'm gonna butcher this. In Sin, I'm gonna call it Syntax. <laughs> Euodia and Syntax, please, please, because you belong to the Lord, settle your disagreement. Now you would think right here that these are two, uh, two people. We we know in the Scripture that they're women. So you would think that here here are these two women who are in a battle, in a struggle. I almost, when I pictured this or heard, you know, was reading this, I'm thinking, man, this is Hatfields and McCoys. We got Mrs. Hatfield, Miss McCoy, and they're going at it. This is a feud that's going on outside, outside the church. But let's go, to, let's go to verse 3. And I ask you, my true partner, so he's talking to Timothy. He's talking to Tim Timothy specifically. And I ask you, my true partner, to help these two women. Not, out, not two women who are outside the church, but two women who are inside the church. For they worked hard with me, Paul, in telling others the good news. They worked along with Clement and the rest of my co-workers, whose names are written in the book of life. Man, that shows you, you know, right there when I was reading just to kind of get a little bit more information uh, about these two women. These two women were fervent in the gospel. They were partners with Paul, they were partners with Clement, and there wasn't anything else about Clement. But there were partners with him, partners with Timothy, partners and co-workers with those who were sharing the gospel, and they were leading, helping lead people to Christ. Amen. Now, all of a sudden, within the church, it called it factions. You got these two factions. 
you know, so many churches, you got cliques. You got this clique who goes along with this group. You got this clique who goes along with that group. Even though they all are in one body of Trails in Cowboy Church, Harrison County, you can have two opposing forces going on at the same time. And if we're not careful, it will cause division to come right up into the church. I love this. Here at Trails In, well, I can tell you myself, when something is brought to my attention that will cause division within the church, we are swift. We are swift to act with love. Most of the time, those involved never even know anything about it because that's the way it ought to be. If it doesn't involve you, we're not going to come out and, well, look at here what we did. Well, by golly, we called this group in and we laid down the law. This is her. Oh, you pull them in and you love them. You love them. And you show, uh, you dig in. You dig in to get to the root of what it is that, that is the division. Once you get to the root of what it is that you, that, that's bringing division, and then healing comes in. And healing starts to take place. The worst thing that could happen in a body when there's division is to ignore it and hope that it goes away. Let me tell you, Trails in Cowboy Church, uh, Dr. Phil said it best when he said, hope is not a strategy. <laughs> hope deferred does make, hope deferred makes a heart sick, but hope alone is not a strategy. Is not a strategy. What he's saying is, work with me, my true partner. I'm asking you to help these two women. Help them. For they worked hard with me in telling the good news. They know the truth. But something has got in between them. Work with me, partner. Partner. To pull these two back together. I love that. Let's look on to verse 4. Always be full of joy in the Lord. Man, y'all remember we covered this. Uh, we covered this kind of in uh, verse 3-1. Do, do y'all have Philippians 3-1 right there real quick? Whatever happens, my dear brothers, whatever happens. That is, is that all-inclusive? Yes. Yeah. Whatever means whatever happens, my dear brothers and sisters. Again, talking to Christians, rejoice in the Lord. I never get tired of telling you these things. I do it to safeguard your faith. Y'all remember, that was the first time that Paul, he always said rejoice, and he always said be happy in all things and be content. But this was the first time in his letter to the Philippians that he actually says rejoice in the Lord. The second time that we're reading now in his final, con his final uh, words, his final thoughts uh, to the, to the uh, Christians at Philippi, to the church at Philippi, he said always be full of joy in the Lord. Uh, why? I got to thinking, why? Why should we always be full of joy? Why is it so important that if you got, you are a cup, and if your cup is absolutely full of joy, or let's say it's not even liquid, let's say your cup is full of, of, of ice all the way to the top, a solid, your cup of water has frozen, and it's solid. You can't get anything else in there, right? So if you're full of joy, then other things that try to get into your life, other things that try to get themselves in the middle of you, if you're full of joy in the Lord, other things are going to have a hard time trying to get in there. Right. And here's the thing that came to my mind. When we are being attacked, inundated with all of these stimuli coming from the outside, all these sources and news and all this trouble and turmoil and division and and arguing and this and that and it's coming from every different which way and we got kids that are acting crazy and they all of a sudden now uh, they 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 they, they taking up weird ideas that you were raised like that where where is that coming from and all these things try to get in Nehemiah eight ten says it's the joy of the Lord that is my strength we gotta hang on to that joy. Solidified, not wishy-washy kind of joy any which way, but loose, solid joy, rock solid, all the way to the top. So no matter what tries to come in, it cannot because the joy in the Lord, joy of the Lord is my strength. Does that make sense? Yes. But how hard is that? 
because he put in that word always. Oh, man. I, well, it reminded me of Jesus took the, when Jesus was here on earth and his teachings, you read, he took the Mosaic law to a whole nother level. Don't commit adultery. Top 10. Jesus said, I say, if you lusted after that woman in your heart, meaning in your mind, you've done it already. That's right. Woo! He took it to a whole nother level. That's what I thought of, you know, when I got to, when I got to thinking of that. Always be full of joy in the Lord. I say it again, Paul says. Rejoice. Rejoice. Verse 5. Let everyone see that you are considerate. Oh, my goodness. And here's another thing right here. Paul, I'm going to tell you what about Paul. Paul is one of those that just takes it to a whole nother level. He ain't even scared about it. Be considerate in all you do. Now, you could miss some stuff if you just read that and kept on going. But what does it mean to be considerate? It means that you consider others or you consider what it is that you're doing. It means that you consider how you act when you're at work. It means that you consider how do you act when you get squeezed. How do you consider how do you act when no one's watching. Consider how do you act when a coarse joke is told at work or outside here or, 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 or at, at a book reading <laughs> or, or at the cell barn or at the liquor store. You mean you think about it. Think about it. You're considerate in all that you do. Consider it at home. Man, be considerate, it says. Be considerate in all that you do. Remember, the Lord is coming soon. Remember, the Lord is coming soon. Whew, good stuff. I like this. Uh, before we go on, I was reminded, always be full of joy. You know, when you're going through something, trial, oh, so, oh one of those storms that's one of those crackerjack storms that just pops up out of nowhere and catches you off guard. You ever been in, involved in one of them? Everything can be going good and all of a sudden, pop! Man, this right here, the uh, devil done jumped right smooth in the middle of your back like a spider monkey on Mountain Dew, and he is wearing you out. And it popped up out of nowhere. And it could be something small. And for those of us on the outside, we could be looking at you going through this thing thinking, that ain't no big deal. Or oh, it's a big deal if it's you. Amen. Here's what I thought of. Man, I got a little nephew. He ain't so little anymore. And uh, he was a uh, Cosy, uh, Cosden, little Cosden Pointer. I think he's probably taller than me now. But when he was a little fella, uh, he was, he was mutton busted. Man, he wanted to grow up and he wanted to be a bull rider. His, uh, his older brother rode junior bulls and he wanted to ride bulls too. And his older brother was way older. And here he got to, got to start off with these sheep, buddy. You're going to have to, you're going to, have to ride sheep. That's where you're going to start off. And man, I'm going to tell you what, that little joker was good. And uh, we went and watched him in Seminole uh, in a rodeo. And uh, it, it was so cute. Man, he got on. He took a good seat. Man, he, 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 put, his, he put his hand in the strap. Man, he, he, he took his wraps, and he's ready to go. And, uh, man, he's got his hat cinched down on top. Man, I know he ain't probably that big at the time. Man, he's on that sheep. He's got spurs dug in. That's on gun. Got his arm up, chest out. He's ready to go. And they open up that gate. Man, that, 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 that sheep done busted out. It almost hit the arena lights. It went up so high. And when it came back down, it almost like it was a slinky. Pow! And it shot right back up again. In his mind, that's probably how it was. Man, that joker didn't let go. Man, I'm going to tell you what, he had, a, he had a hold of that wool. He wasn't letting go. He rode. Well, it was a period of time. And have you ever been to a mutton buster? They don't really get up that high. You know, they just kind of, more than anything, they run. But, you know, to a, to a little kid, that's a big deal. So this sheep done took off out of there, man, and he's running. Man, I'm going to tell you what, uh, Okazi was looking good, boy. And, and, and then he got bucked off. When he got bucked off, I remember he got hung up in the rigging. I'll never forget this. The arena was kind of rough. Have any of you ever seen a, a fresh plowed field? You know, it, you can see the rows. Well, that's kind of how it was out over the arena. Well, Kaz, and he was about this tall, and he was about that big around. He's a bean pole. 
And after supper, he looked like a peacock in a straw. I mean, he's skinny. And his, I remember when he was hung up, his little body, and I watched it, it was funny. His little body was going, ooh, 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 just like that, over all of the little ruts. And, and man, we were, me and his daddy, Will, we were standing over there watching. And we were kind of laughing because it, it was, he didn't get stepped on or nothing, but they went out there, you know, the guy who had the sheep, he just went over there and stopped the sheep, got him unhung, and he came back, and I'm going to never forget, he was holding his hand, he was kind of sniffing it a little bit, he said, Dad, I was hung up bad. <laughs> <laughs> well, to a five-year-old, that's bad, that's bad. We didn't know what he was going through. Man, this was the end of the world. I'm coming to see him, Elizabeth. You know, he thought, this is it. This is the end. I'm showing up fixing to meet my maker. When all along, you're standing on the outside, and it don't seem that bad. I can assure you that at that moment, Cosden was not rejoicing in the Lord. <laughs> it's hard to do when you're going through a storm, when you're going through a trial, when you have those things that pop up. When you get a report that you got cancer, you know, some of you who've been there, done that, or been with others who have, you remember that day. The day before, shoo, man, I'm rocking and rolling. Then all of a sudden you get that report and you go, what? What? That's one of those storms in life that changes just like that. One report. What do you do when that comes over and plays over and over and over in your mind to the point that it's got your focus. It's got you jacked up. You can't see anything else for that. Keep picturing that picture over and over in your head where they circle it and go right here. It's where it is. What do you do when those moments in time come? Verse 6. Don't worry. <laughs> well, thanks, Paul. G. Willikers. I didn't realize it was going to be that easy. Well, heck, don't worry. Don't worry about some things. Anything, Paul says. Well, you say, well, obviously, Paul ain't never been nothing, been through nothing. <laughs> Paul was shipwrecked. Paul was stoned at Lystra, snake bit by a poisonous serpent, and he shook it off in the fire and kept on preaching. Oh, well, Paul been through some <laughs> imprisoned in chains, whipped, beaten, stoned, tormented. Oh, Paul been through some stuff. I believe he's probably qualified uh, to, I mean, he's got some street cred where he could say, don't worry about anything. I guarantee you, in the beginning, that wasn't so easy for Paul. He had to learn. It's a process to get there. He came to the point in life where he could tell the church of Philippi, that he could tell us, uh, don't worry about anything. Well, you know that alone is not going to get it. You can't just not worry about anything, right? Here's this word right here. Instead, you got to do something instead of worry. When things like that in, in, in life that cause us to worry, when things like that pop up and give us cause to worry, instead of worrying, we should do what, Paul says? Pray about what? everything. Don't worry about anything. Instead, he's not saying there won't be times that you have to worry or there would be no need to put, don't worry. Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all he's done. Tell God what you need. You know, I've met some folks that are like, man, I just don't ask God for nothing for myself. And to that I reply, God is more e eager to answer than you are to ask. Man, he, you're his kids. You're his kids. He wants to give you. He wants to do. Now, I don't want to be one of those that just asks only everything for myself. It's always me, me, me. I want to talk about me. I want to talk about I. I don't want it to be all about me, you know. I want to pray for others. But it's okay to pray, God, give me peace. Whatever it is, God, give me favor when I'm going into this interview. God, I thank you for increase. 
God, I thank you that you give us safe passage. It's okay to ask things for yourself. Man, we can approach our Father. He, I want to let you know in, in on, a, on a secret. Your Father, God, is approachable. <laughs> Your Father is approachable. Come to Him. Go to Him. Tell God what you need. Paul's giving you permission. Tell God what you need. Inspired by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is speaking through Paul when Paul says, tell God what you need. And thank him for all he's done. The reason why these two things are together, because if we're telling God what we need, now all of a sudden we're starting to thank him for all he's done. It causes us to remember those times when they were in possible situations that we didn't know how, how in the world we were going to get out of this. We didn't know how this was going to work out. We didn't know when. We didn't know how. We didn't know who. We didn't know. We were in that complete state of helplessness, hopelessness, and didn't know. But then Jesus made a way where there seemed to be no way. It was we, spiritually speaking, who were standing in front of the Red Sea with the Egyptian army at our tail. Satan was on our heels. We felt like we were going to be crushed at any minute. But then God made a way. He made a path through the Red Sea for the Israelites. He does the same for us. He makes a way where there seems to be no way. And we start to remember that. When we start to remember that, we start to get encouraged. Oh, God, you've been there for me. All these times, the same God who was with you through those times is the same God who's going to be with you in these new times. Tell God what you need. Thank him for all he's done. Verse 7. Then you will experience whose peace? God's peace. He didn't say, then you're going to have peace. Better than that, you're going to experience God's peace. God's peace, which is far more wonderful, another translation, which exceeds anything that we can understand. His peace. Now, here's the thing, and I underlined it twice. I don't know why I just read over this so many times before. His peace will guard your heart and mind as you live in Christ Jesus. God's peace will stand guard over your heart and your mind as you live in Christ Jesus, telling God what you need, thanking Him for all He's done. Then you experience God's peace. As you live in Christ, His peace guards your heart and it guards your mind as you live in Christ Jesus. Let's look at... Uh, John 14, 27. Jesus said, now this is if the whole world is still in chaos around you, you can still have peace, right? Everything can be in turmoil all around you. Matter of fact, you've done those things that Paul said, I'm, 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 I'm requesting, I'm thanking. God's peace is here even though my situation has not changed. You can still have peace in the middle of that storm. You can still have peace in the middle of that situation because that peace that guards your heart comes from Jesus, and he's telling it right here. I'm leaving you with a gift. What kind of gift? Peace of what? Mind. And what? Heart. What did he just say? Paul just said, peace will guard your heart and your mind. I am leaving you with a gift, Jesus said. Do we have to earn that gift? No, it's free. It's a gift. <laughs> peace of mind and heart. And here's where he explains. And the peace I give is the gift the world cannot give. So don't be troubled or afraid. Why would he need to say don't be troubled or afraid if, if, if that meant everything works out? Everything works out. And you can hear the birds singing, Kumbaya, my Lord, Kumbaya. It don't work like that all the time. It's still chaos all around you, but you got peace on the inside. Amen. That's what he's talking about. That's the kind of peace that Jesus is talking about. That's the kind of peace that Paul is referring to when we make our requests, when we thank him for all he's done. Then God, then the peace from God comes. His peace guards our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. I'm going to stop right there. Let's pray.
Father God, we just thank you and we praise you for the opportunity we've had, Lord. Just, well, Lord, this encouraged me. <laughs> I, knew what, I knew what was coming, and, I, and I'm encouraged. God, I thank you and I praise you for your goodness. I thank you for your mercy. I thank you for your grace. I thank you for your peace. I thank you that your peace guards our hearts and our minds in the midst of a troubled situation. And when someone asks, why do you have so much peace? Do you not watch the news? Do you not see what's going on around? Because my peace doesn't come from the world. My peace doesn't come from Fox. My peace doesn't come from Biden. My peace doesn't come from, from our representatives. It doesn't come from Democrats. It doesn't come from Libertarians. It doesn't come from politics. My peace comes from Jesus. Amen. The name above every name. Amen. And I thank you that Jesus, you said in your word that the peace that you give, the world cannot give. And I thank you, Lord, that it's peace in our mind. It's peace in our heart. Thank you, Jesus, that as we keep our mind, our thoughts focused on you, you give us that peace. Father God, I praise you and I thank you. Go with us all week, Lord. Help us to be a light in a dark place. And Lord, I pray that you spur us on. And uh, Lord, if there's somebody that we know, that we know personally, Lord, I pray that you show us how we can witness and be a witness for you, Jesus whether it's to say it, whether it's to live it, whatever it is that you require of us to do, God, I pray that we're obedient. We take our shot. We take the shots that you give us to take. And I know that you'll get all the glory. Father, thank you so much. We love you. In Jesus' name, amen.